خلقك خلقك الحمد لله ما حد بياخذ منك رزقك هدي وارتاح تابر وارضح من حقك بس بلاش العين لا 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 ما تسوى الدنيا مضيق خلقك الحمد لله ما حد بياخذ منك رزقك هدي وارتاح تابر وارضح من حقك بس بلاش Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome to Community Showcase. Today we chat to the CEO of the Children's Hospital Trust in Cape Town, Louise Driver. Hi Louise. Hi, thank you so much for the opportunity to be on the show. Very excited to have you in studio. Of course you work with the Red Cross Hospital in Cape Town and for those, I mean in Cape Town, mm. we're all familiar with the hospital being there for so many years. Mm. Do you want to tell us a bit more about the Red Cross Hospital? Yeah, well the Red Cross Children's Hospital was opened in 1956 so it's our wow. 60th birthday this year, which is quite incredible. And it really is the only dedicated standalone children's hospital in sub-Saharan Africa. So it is it's, it's a real specialist hospital serving the sickest of, of the sick. Yes. Um, and we represent all the major um, subspecialities from oncology to renal to gastro um, in, intestinal. You know, so we really... If, if your child is desperately ill or injured, their best point of call is to come to the Red Cross Children's Hospital. What makes the hospital so amazing is that 98% of our patients are from impoverished backgrounds. Yet, our doctors, our pediatricians there, are some of the best in their field in the world. So you've got the poorest of the poor receiving the best possible medical care, which is just an amazing, amazing, unique uh, you know, uh, selling point of, of, of the, the, the Red Cross Children's Hospital. Uh, we see about 260,000 patients a year. So we get mm -hmm. a lot, a lot of patients. Uh, the, the hospital is continually full. Um, and uh, we see a lot of patients from, as a direct result of the, the impoverished backgrounds where they come from, you know. So uh, we, we see burns, we see a lot of um, diarrhea, we see pneumonia, because these children are coming from living in shacks and where the hygiene levels are very poor. So, uh, but we have, we, we, we have amazing record of, of saving so many children's lives. And I think whoever you speak to says, oh, I was at the Red Cross, my, my, my sister's child or my, my colleagues was at the Red Cross. It really um, touches so many lives. So we, in um, about 22 years ago, the Red Cross Jones Hospital was under threat of closure because of a lack of government funding. And then that's when the Children's Hospital Trust, which is the organization which I head up, came into being. So to save the hospital. And a couple of uh, really dedicated doctors formed the Children's Hospital Trust. And for the last 22 years, we have been keeping the hospital going and making sure it stays as a world-class hospital in terms of providing additional buildings, modernized equipment, training for the, for the doctors and the nurses, specialized treatment for the, the various patients, specialized programs. So really making sure that we continue to, to give the amazing service, to give children the best chance to get better and return home. Because our whole ethos at the Children's Hospital Trust is every day in hospital is a day less of childhood. So we essentially are giving childhood back to the many, many, many children who come to the hospital. Subhanallah. Sister Louise, now something like this, if, if you're talking about the hospital trust mm -hmm. itself, mm -hmm. I'm sure that you're faced with so many projects mm -hmm. and that it has its own challenges. Mm -hmm. Would you want to tell us a bit about current projects though? Yeah, we have, um, we have a big challenge this year mm -hmm. and that the provincial government had to cut the hospital's budget by 13 million rand. So, uh, uh, so we've, we've got that challenge we're trying to deal with to try to fund the, the things the hospitals are having to cut off their budget. But we, the range of projects we, we currently uh, funding uh, range from, as I said, doctors and nurses training to providing um, rehabilitation services for children and, um, and a, a, a new burns outpatients, dressing room for our burns patients. So these are all our smaller projects, but our big priority project at the moment is building a bigger and better ICU. 
So that ICU has been, um, you know, it, it is, it's the biggest ICU in Africa, and yet we cannot cope with the demand. It is full 24-7. <laughs> they, they're running at over 100%, and we need additional beds. We need more space. The parents next to the beds, there's hardly any space for them to sit, plus the, the, the equipment, the staff who work in crazy hours, their shifts are just really odd. They, um, they need better facilities, um, we need better life-saving equipment, and we really need to be able to increase our capacity to serve the many children who, 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 um, who need our ICU services. And, um, you know, we, the, the ICU, we see children from all around Africa. Because it's the largest ICU in Africa and we are the only standalone dedicated children's hospital, we get cases from all around, severe cases. We get a lot of cases from private, where they've been to the private hospitals, they can't help them, and they come to the Red Cross because that's where the top people are. The top doctors yeah. are. So it is, it's, it's an incredible life-saving unit. It really is, but the, the pressure is huge in terms of not enough space for the staff, for the patients, for the families. Uh, so we are now building a brand new ICU. That ICU um, will include, um, it will, will uh, almost double the capacity of, of our beds. It will include special uh, facilities for the parents from, from breastfeeding to counseling rooms to a, to a nice kitchen to bathroom facilities. Um, there will be better facilities for the staff where they, need, where they need to rest and take time off. And there will be better facilities for the patients where they're more comfortable. Also in terms of severity of illness, we need to have isolation cubicles. Because some children are either so sick that they're easily infected or they're very infectious. So we're going to have eight isolation cubicles to make sure those, those children are, um, are safe um, from infection. And then we're also going to have 10 neonatal high care beds. So what happens is our little neonates, and there are a lot of them are desperately, desperately ill, they spread out all through the hospital, but we need a dedicated area which where they can be cared for because neonatology is such a specific uh, you know, a type of treatment that they need. So we're going to build this 10 bed high care unit for the neonates. So it really, it will, it will also separate our our patients into a medical um, ICU, a surgical ICU, and then the neonatal wing, so that they can treat the children to the best of their ability within within the ICU. So it's it's a um, this this project will really improve our services that we give to the, the many many children um, in ICU. Plus, it will allow us to serve that many more children. Subhanallah. Stay tuned, we need to go in for an ad break and when we come back we're going to continue chatting to Louise Driver on the Red Cross projects. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back to Community Showcase. We have just before the break we have been speaking to the CEO of the Children's Hospital Trust, Louise Driver. Louise, before the break you were telling us about the Red Cross Hospital and um, the current projects of the Hospital Trust. But would you like to take us for a walk through those wards? Because, of course, you have your eyes as to what the situations are there like for the parents and for the patients. Yes, uh, when just before the break, we were talking about our current priority project, the biggest project we're working mm -hmm. on at the moment at the Red Cross Children's Hospital. And that is the upgrading and expansion of our pediatric intensive care unit. And at the moment, this intensive care unit is too small to cope with the demand. Uh, if you actually visit the ICU, you can, you can give a, a sense of, of this incredible life-saving unit. You know, you, as a mother, I've got two small children, I walk into that and straight away your heart is just heavy because you see these very young children who have got a whole range of, of, of different cases. Um, but there's also this feeling of hope within the, within the ICU because there's such incredible staff treating uh, these, these patients. 
if you walk around, you'd see a little baby, maybe not more than one kilo, who's just had cardiac surgery, has just had heart surgery. And it's, it's incredible to see a baby of that size who's been able to be operated on and survive. You'll then go to another bed and see a burns patient who's had 60% of their body surface burnt. Um, this little patient had pulled a boiling pot off the, st off the stove. The stove was on the floor, they were living in a shack, poured over, and the incredible treatment this, this child has had to replace the skin and also and to, to um, have the treatment pain-free. You move to another bed and there is a child who's been in a serious car accident. And um, again, running across a highway shouldn't be unattended, and um, and yet has got these amazing treatments to 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 fix her. And then we see patients from from drowning because of um, because a lot of them, you know, at that small age can't can't swim. And then children with respiratory and, uh, problems often these little children have pneumonia because they're living in cold, damp shacks. And um, so they get sick very often. So you see quite a range of children. Most of them are, are um, very young, a couple of years old. Um, and a lot of them don't have the parents by their bedside. Mm. Either their parents work full time and cannot afford to be near their bedside, or they come from the Eastern Cape or West, West, West Coast and their parents can't be with them. And it's really hard to see such small, vulnerable children so scared all alone. And that's where the ICU staff become their family. And it's incredible, the support they give those children, I even under the stressful conditions as ICU staff work, they give them that support. Um, we've even got a photographer who comes in and takes photos of the children and sends them to their parents so the parents can see their child is still all right. You know, it's, it's incredible. For those parents who are not there, who are there, we, uh, the, the, the ICU team provides an amazing support for them. They make sure that they're emotionally looked after, that they've, they've got meals, that they understand their children's uh, condition. And a lot of the, the, the mothers and fathers, after their child is, is goes, comes back home, comes to visit the hospital and says, thank you, you were our family. You were our family for, for, a, for, a, for a year while our child was in hospital. So it really is a very a parent family centered hospital where we try and work with the entire family to not fix the child, but to help the family through it. And the ICU really is the heart of it because that is when your child is seriously ill seriously injured so it it uh, as I said as a mother when I go in it's 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 such an incredible place of hope and healing but also um, a, a place of of for the parents of, of, of anxiety and we really try and make sure that we we look after the parents and and show them how this is the this is the best hope for their child to get better Louise, I can only imagine because we have the, our little flus and if we have the kids at home, mm -hmm. they become more clingy mm -hmm. to mommy and mm -hmm. stuff. So mm -hmm. I can only imagine the difficulty that you are actually seeing um, at the hospital. Mm -hmm. So the actual ICU unit at Cadent, mm -hmm. what is the situation? Because you're obviously saying they don't mm -hmm. have the capacity mm -hmm. um, to facilitate everything everyone yes. at the one yeah. time so what happens is we don't have enough ICU beds uh, that's our biggest prob problem there's a shortage in the province in South Africa and Africa of short of, of, of ICU beds which means a child who's critically ill or injured needs to be operated on but we can't operate on them till they've got a bed so they constantly have to shuffle non um, urgent operations non critical ones need to be delayed which is, is not great at all. And it's constantly a shuffling exercise. And as one child leaves the ICU bed, the next one arrives, just they change the bedding and the next one comes. It, it really is, is very stressful. And it, it means that you know, we want to save more lives. And the more beds we have, the, the, and ICU, the, the more lives we can save. Uh, also, just in terms of space, you know, really trying to look, as I said, look after the parents, look after the family, provide somewhere where they're comfortable. Many of those parents sit on a chair next to those beds every day and every night for the whole time their child is in ICU. And it's so stressful for them. So we try to make that time less stressful. I mean, it's a, it's a mother or father's worst nightmare to be in that ICU. And so we want to give them the emotional support, but also the physical support, that they are comfortable, that they are looked after. 
So, and then, as I said, with the, with, with the, with the, the, the medical staff also, they, you know, they, they work such, uh, such long hours and they're exhausted and they're dealing with seriously ill children. So they need to be looked after too. And that's what the idea is for our new ICU is to make sure the staff are also comfortable and looked after and have a place to rest and um, relax in between the stresses of saving children's lives. Indeed, because it's still a stressful situation then. Mm. Louise, I'm going to ask you though, mm. because I'm not too sure how long you have been on this mm. task, mm -hmm. if you're with them since the onset, mm -hmm. what has really stood out for you as an experience um, since being on the TRAS? Yeah, uh, sure. So I've been there six and a half years and I've had two children since being there. So <laughs> my job has got more and more uh, relevant, which, which is really, really great. I used to walk into the wards before having children and, and not cry. Now I cry every time, even though I'm there every day. <laughs> it's so emotional. But there was an amazing story of, um, of a child that, they, uh, that the, the, the ICU saved but afterwards the child and the parent had to get back to the place where they stayed and they, it, it just how they looked after the family, how they got them back to, to the place where, where the family stayed. And also the, 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 the place where they stayed, it was the, the sh shack was not hygienic. They made sure there was food parcels, they made sure there was, a, there was um, hygienic products to keep it clean. And they made sure, what, what was amazing to me is the treatment didn't stop once the child's life was saved there. They made sure that the child was continued to look after beyond its stay. So they go beyond the call of duty. The, 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 the hospital staff and particularly the ICU team to make sure that the child they said will continue to be looked after. That certainly mm. touches the heart mm. but we need to go in for an ad break and when we come back we will continue chatting to our CEO Louise Driver. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back to Community Showcase. Just before the break, we have been chatting to CEO of the Children's Hospital Trust at Red Cross um, in Cape Town. And subhanallah, just having to listen to all of the cases of the children, I think it's going into all of our hearts, Louise. I don't know how you manage to do it every day, but I think it's the whole big question of how of all the challenges that all of those parents and children mm -hmm. are facing on a daily basis, eh? Yeah, but as I mentioned earlier, it really is a place of hope and healing. And you get more the sense of that working there than the sense of, of, of desperation or sadness, so. Yeah, well, it's a big project that is happening. Mm -hmm. um, you're looking at extending the ICU section. Yes. So let's touch on that again, because I'm sure that yeah there's going to be lots needed to make this project a great success. Yes, well, it is, it's a huge project, one of the biggest projects we've had to undertake uh, as, as the trust, and we have to raise 100 million rand, wow. um, 75 million rand for the building of the new ICU and 25 million for uh, pr providing new equipment for the ICU. So that, uh, we've been fundraising for two years um, to provide this bigger and better ICU. And we have successfully raised most of the money, but now we need the last 10 million to, um, to reach our 100 million rand target, which we need to, to um, reach by the end of June. So very soon. The end and of June. Yes, wow. um, because uh, we, uh, in terms of our construction program. Mm -hmm. So we, uh, we've had incredible support for th the first am amount of fundraising from, from corporates, from trusts and foundations, from community groups, from individuals, uh, from overseas. We've really had great support. But now what we're doing is we're appealing to the public, to the South African members of the community to, to please help us raise this final 10 million. And I think most of you viewers out there are, are, are mothers or parents or grandparents or have cousins or somehow have some children in your life. And if, you, if your child was desperately ill, what you would want to do is send them to the Red Cross Children's Hospital ICU. So really this project is for, for, for everyone. The Red Cross is a community hospital. It's always been known as a hospital for the community. And that's why we need the community support. And with this final 10 million, we are trying to get people to fund a cost of a child a day in ICU. So that's 10,000 Rand a day. 
it costs for, 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 for one child to stay in ICU. And if somebody wanted to fund one day or a month, they, they could do that. Uh, and if people don't have the capacity to fund that one day, then you could come together as a community. We Indeed. have amazing, we have got community groups, we've got uh, women's groups, we've got fundraising groups, um, all who, who um, also companies, business owners, or who have collectively come together to, to support the ICU. And that's the kind of collective community support we need. Indeed, and I'm sure every bit contributes to making it a success. Yeah, we, we have very much the philosophy at the Children's Hospital Trust in terms of fundraising that every cent counts, that collectively we can make something happen. And we, um, every donor, no matter how big or small, are making this project happen. I'm sure you've reached into the hearts and the homes of all of our viewers, uh, Louise. If somebody is wanting to get involved on the project or contributing towards mm. the project, how do they do so? So what they would do is they could go onto our website, mm -hmm. which is childrenshospitaltrust.org.za, and in that way go, go online and you can find out how to donate or the various ways to get involved. Otherwise, we have an SMS line where people can donate, uh, and that's 40465, or they can call us. Um, um, I'm not sure if I should give our contact details here, but otherwise they can be found on, on the website and we can explain how to, how to support us. So uh, there is, uh, there's, a, uh, there's many different ways which people can donate. And if they want to get ideas how they can collectively um, raise funds, then we, um, we, we, we'd be able to support them. But we really appeal to everybody to help this community hospital, um, you know, if, if, if you go into the ICU, and we also encourage visits to the, to the ICU, if you go into the ICU and see what life-saving work they're doing and see that it could possibly be your child or the, the children in your life there, it really will make you want to support and, and, and allow this, this critical project to happen. Indeed. Well, we all know that Shifa comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but it takes the work of our doctors and our nurses and, of course, lots of prayer, Louise. Um, in fact, I need to admit that I've been one of the, hus uh, one of the hospital's patients oh, as well as a child, and alhamdulillah, I've lived a healthy, full life. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm just thinking how merciful God is mm, yeah. in contributing, and I love the fact that you have so much of hope yeah. Because sometimes when challenges hit us, mm -hmm. they hit us hard. Yes. And yes. they come from anywhere. Yeah, yes. So for all of our viewers who are at home, honestly, look at the family. Look at yourself because it could be you. Yes. And uh, as I say, I, with my young children, I know that if they're desperately ill, I have this amazing resource on, on, on my doorstep, <laughs> which is really incredible. And it's, it's, you know, it's very interesting to hear that your life has been touched by the Red Cross Children's Hospital because so many people you speak to have is somehow is linked. And all of them have got, have their lives have been saved or they've got a really positive story to share so uh, as I said I think it's everybody's it's everybody's uh, duty to contribute to this hospital because these are our children this is our future generation and we need to make sure that they're healthy and back home to continue their childhood indeed Louise from here now once the once the pledge is met mm -hmm. which we are hoping everybody's going to mm -hmm. get onto mm -hmm. their phones and start pledging yes, immediately yes, um, <laughs> and by the end of June, how soon are we looking at the ICU being up? So the, the, the end of June, our first phase, our medical ICU will be ready. And then next October, the entire project, the entire ICU wing. We have to build it in phases because we can't shut down the ICU because it's too much desperate need. So, so we will have the first wing ready by, by June and then the whole project, the, the surgical wing and the neonatal unit ready by October next year, 2017. I think, Louise, let's get back into our homes and our TV sets and get everyone to pledge. What is those details again? Okay, so please visit our website, www.childrenshospitaltrust.org.za to find out how to donate. Otherwise, you can, you can um, SMS 40465 to, to donate directly or you can call us on 021 686 
7860 to, uh, to find out more about how to donate. I need to say thank you so much to you for joining us in studio and I'm wishing you all of the best and everybody at Red Cross. Inshallah may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them all shifa and good health once again and the doctors and nurses the strength as well. And God thank bless you. you and your entire team on the Children's Hospital at Ras Louise. Thank you and thank you to all your viewers who I know are going to support this amazing worthy cause. Uh, we really appreciate the support. Yep, so start dialing or at least visit the webpage and get your pledges in. And uh, thanks once again, Louise. Thank you. From myself to Stimaadi, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <laughs> لا 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 ما تسوى الدنيا مضيق خلقك الحمد لله ما حد بياخذ منك رزقك هدي وارتاح تابر وطمح من حقك بس